Hey guys, don't forget to ring the bell after subscribing. This way you won't miss my new videos. Now it's been four years, four years since I've bought these boots and I have not washed them even once. Now apart from that one single time where I washed them in ocean. Stop! I command thou in the name of God. <laughs> these things have protected me through a crash. These things have kept my foot from bending in all the off-roads that I've done. They have seen touring, they have seen off-roading, they have seen race tracks. Maybe I should actually give them a proper wash now. So let's go. So step one, I'm gonna carry them to a washing center because they need pressure wash. They clearly need pressure wash. So I tied them up like this and I brought them to the washing center. Look at this. This is the bungee. So I used the bungee to tie them up and thankfully on R15 there are a lot of slots like this. Although it's a track bike, there's a lot of slots like this and these slots have taken a lot of beating. Generally, my bungee goes through here. When I used to tie my backpacking bag over here while touring. But for this one, this one's fat. This is, uh, I think somebody left me this bungee as a gift because they were not using it. Or probably like a karma because last time I gave away my bungees to somebody and they didn't return it. So I got bungees from somebody else for free now. So here we go. Let's get to washing it. So this is called the X tie. The X kind of uh, formation of tying up. Every tourer needs to know this and not throw the boots off like that. Girgya bhai, girgya, girgya. X ties are pretty strong. The X, X way of tying things up are pretty strong. There are other ways of tying your luggage on the tail to go touring, like for your bag to go touring, but that is one of the ways. Hopefully, I'll show you some other ways later. So the first thing we're going to do is pressure wash them. First with lower pressure and then with a little higher pressure. Uh, this is just soaking in. And now this is high pressure. Now let's turn them around. This side's more dirty. So this side's got the buckles and stuff. So this side's gonna be a little bit of challenge. What we're gonna do is put them crisscross like this because we have to aim water through that. I think these ones we can go high pressure directly. High pressure. You are so Okay, now we put a little bit of anti-grease on this. Actually, not a little bit, a little bit more than usual. So I'm gonna rub it off completely on all the parts, the muddy parts of the boot. Just rub it off. This is gonna need me to use both the hands. So I'm gonna stop recording and resume when this is done. And definitely remember to properly clean your hands after doing this. All right, so I took out a new grunge brush for this. You're not supposed to do this. You can like take a toothbrush or something, but I didn't find it on time, so took a new grunge brush out for this. Don't worry, this can be put back. So what I'm doing is these parts that are like yellowish, as you see, you grunge brush them. You can actually take a toothbrush and do this, but grunge brush also grunge brush also works fine. So basically repeat this whole process everywhere where you want the yellowness to go away. This is almost like painting. You see? You see the change of color? All that mud and grease and all that thing that has been accumulated from the last four years is just going away. You see? 
it's a little white now. So I have to repeat the process for all these parts. It's easier to take off on these parts rather than these. So I'm gonna struggle a bit and then we're gonna continue the video. Damn it, I need a bigger bucket. I need a bigger bucket. The shoe is not going in. Well, if this was normal racing shoe, it would like fit into this bucket or street riding shoe. But since this is an MX, it's a little taller. It's so I did not ask for this, but I don't know why. My bike's chain is being cleaned for free and there is a spectator over here watching it out. And there's a small spectator over there, probably grow up to be a biker, I don't know. But seems interested in being a grease monkey. What are you doing with my car's chain? I don't want to say anything. Do you want to say something special? I want to say something. I'll give you a throttle. Alright, so I guess uh, this is enough. We're gonna... We're gonna take them out. Well, they are not super white as I expected. But then hey, if you don't clean your boots for four years, don't expect them to be super white in the first wash of right? You gotta iterate this. All right, now last round of pressure wash and we're done. Now what you're gonna do is put your hands inside, feel it, feel it and remove these the soles. You gotta remove these, dry them up separately, dry your boots out separately. It's already evening, so I'm gonna put them out in the balcony. I have to carry them back wet on my bike's tail. Tomorrow morning I'm gonna put them out on the terrace for it to completely dry. Look what I just found in the terrace. People do not dispose of these things after the festival. Then again, now this is going to be a little useful for me. So what I'm gonna do is place one like this. Right, so I did that. You see that? What this does is it opens up the whole inner for the sunlight to soak in and remove all the water and this this area which would generally be folded this is like a resin or something like that so this thing cracks up if it is if it is wet always so that is gonna face the Sun which is on this side and dry up properly so this is what you gotta do to guard Look what I found guys, this is a brand new Charisma R. It's got no number plate. Is this freaking brand new? How did this guy get this? This is not the new Charisma. This is the old Charisma R and it's brand new. What the hell? Look at that, there's like still covers on it. You see that? I know I'm supposed to show you guys the boots after the wash. But I completely forgot to record that part and I took the boots to racetrack or dirt track and one off-roading ride. Sorry! So anyway, but still the boots uh, after the wash, they are a little better, still better. I mean, one racetrack session and, you know, one off-roading ride didn't really spoil it that much from the wash condition. You see, it's become white on this side at least, but these uh, will probably take another wash to reduce that yellow tinting but I don't really care because it's mud. It's proof and memories of all the off-roading that we've done. I hope you guys are also taking care of your motorcycle boots and if you don't have one, I recommend this to every biker who does like touring or off-roading or going to racetrack. Get motorcycle boots, you will thank them later. Invest that, you know, it starts from 8,000 or something today, 8,000, 7,000 also. Uh, these back then when I bought it was 14,000. I'm pretty sure somebody is importing these O'Neills to India now. Maybe not the same model, but another entry level model for like 11,000. These have protected my feet. I would have had a really bad broken leg if it was not for these. And trust me, the money you put into these boots or any boots in any proper boots for your riding, you will thank them later. It does not compare anything 
to the pain you will get if you have a broken foot or to the hospital bills that you will get it if you have a fracture or anything. Definitely recommend getting riding boots. And if you want to watch my really, really old video, which was bad and horrible audio about these boots when I bought them and how to break them in, there is a video. I'll link it in the description, especially the last part of it when I indulge in a little bit of fun to show you how to break in these motorcycle boots. So if you love this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write in comments below and check out the other videos that I make. Motor vlogs, life vlogs and gaming vlogs. I make a lot of stuff which I'll link on the screen. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. This is Hardworking Biker signing off. Sayonara.